Do the terms ABS, Juice, Hot End and Feeder Gear confuse you? Well, be confused no longer as we jargon bust common 3D printing terms in this 3D Printing 101. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. So as a newbie coming into 3D printing, you may be somewhat confused by all the terms that you have to learn, many of which have been coined by the 3D printing community and you won't actually hear anywhere else. But what do they all mean? Hot end. This is the business end of your FDM 3D printer, where the molten plastic is extruded out and laid down onto your print bed. A hot end has a heater block, usually an aluminium block with a high current resistor and a sensor to regulate the temperature, and your nozzle, which has a tiny hole in the end for plastic to come out in a controlled manner. This plastic may be fed via a direct driven extruder, which simply means the motor pushing it is on the head itself, or via a Bowden extruder, meaning that the extruder motor is mounted on the printer's chassis instead and forces the filament through a long tube towards the hot end. It's important to note that in a Bowden design, the plastic still only melts in the hot end, just the same as direct driven. So, how does this plastic get forced through your hot end? With your extruder gear, also known as a feeder or filament drive gear. This is what bites onto the filament and forces it forward as it rotates. So unless your 3D printer is fairly unusual, it probably uses what's called stepper motors to drive the axes and extruder. These motors are called stepper motors as they can be precisely controlled in what's known as steps, making them perfect for accurate controlled movements on the cheap. So once the 3D printer is homed, meaning all axes are moved to a homing end stop or limit switch, the machine needs to keep the stepper motors powered on at all times, even when the machine's not moving. This means the motors can sometimes get quite hot and they consume quite a bit of power. If a stepper motor is forced out of position, the machine will need to rehome. This is because stepper motors don't have any method of positional feedback. They are dumb or open loop in that regard. Some higher end machines, and I do mean quite a fair bit higher end, may have encoders which do provide this positional feedback and can detect if a collision or misalignment occurs. Now backtracking a little, what on earth is an axis anyway? A 3D printer has three dimensions, hence 3D printer. They're known as X, Y and Z, or Z for your Americans. X is usually side to side, Y is usually back and front, although it can depend on the machine's configuration, but Z is always height. I could go into this deeper, but it's a topic for its very own video, so let's move on. Heated bed or hot bed, pretty simple. It means the surface you're printing on will warm up. This is critical for many plastics and a big deciding factor between lower cost machines which don't have this feature. On a side note, which is quite related, this is a add on board for the Up Mini. It's the Up Mini Bed Plus, which I'll be reviewing in a future video, which supposedly lets you print far bigger prints on the Up Mini without warping. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. Most heated beds can get up to 100 degrees C or more, so be careful not to burn yourself on them or your hot end. And the printing platform is also known as the build plate. Timing belts and pulleys. These are what make your machine able to move. The timing comes from tiny teeth along the belt preventing slipping. This is critical to allow control movements from your stepper motors to be translated to your print head. Timing belts are a very low cost solution for this though, and they do have some play or what's known as backlash, which is unwanted free movement. For this reason, many 3D printers elect to use Acme nuts and screws, or even what's known as ball screws for the Z axis, which provides much higher precision than the belts can allow. So how do you know what type your printer has? Well, if you turn it off mint print and the Z just falls instantly, it's belts. If it doesn't move at all, it's probably Acme screws. And if it does fall slowly and gracefully, you're very lucky. And you're lucky enough to have low friction ball screws, which are by far the best solution, but also by far the most expensive. And then we have ABS juice. So ABS juice is a concoction of ABS dissolved into acetone. You can use this to massively improve adhesion on your print bed as the acetone will evaporate, leaving a very thin film of ABS behind. Be very careful though not to get this on your skin or anything for that matter. And also be careful with the fumes from the acetone, but it does make a very good glue as well for sticking ABS prints together. Definitely a term coined specifically for the 3D printing market, ABS juice. Don't drink it. Filament, this is what you print with. It comes in a roll that looks like oversized with a sniffer wire and the most common types or flavors are 1.75 mil or three mil. Also 2.85 tends to be interchangeably used with three mil, just to confuse things a little bit more. You can also get different types of plastics. ABS or PLA are the most popular. If you're interested to know the differences between those two plastics, definitely check out my other video in the link above. Heated build chamber. This is different to a heated build plate and a lot of higher end printers will enclose the print area to keep the heat in. This will generally improve your print quality and limits warping which can occur when the print cools too quickly. This chamber may be passively heated through heat off the build bed and extruder or it may be actively heated with an additional heat source. The very high end FDM machines like the Stratasys U-Print, Fortis and those machines will have an actively heated build oven which is the ultimate version of this technique which means you can print parts which pretty much have no warping at all. It's pretty phenomenal but it's very expensive. 
So what is warping anyway? Well, when a 3D print starts to curl, lift up, or otherwise fail horribly, this is known as warping. Warping is caused when a plastic will cool too fast and non-uniformly, and as it cools it shrinks, and therefore you get warping. And then there's sag, which is the opposite to warping, when a part cools too slowly and starts to droop down due to gravity, or otherwise look fairly terrible. This can be a big problem with PLA when it's extruded at too high of a temperature, or the chamber is too hot. But uh, yeah, just watch out for that, and if you're having that trouble, just cool it quicker. Raft, a cute little platform you can print under your object. This helps with part adhesion to your print bed, and it's quite useful if your print bed has lots of sort of nicks, scratches, or an uneven surface you don't want to be reproduced into your print. It does tend to waste a lot of plastic and adds more time to your print though. Raftless, pretty self-explanatory printing with no raft. Printing with no raft or raftless is directly onto your print bed. It can be trickier to dial in than with a raft, but it means the bottom surface of your print will look really good if you get it right. You can get pretty much a mirror finish if you're printing straight onto a glass bed. Raftless, it can look really good. PTFE tube, also known as Teflon. It's simply a very low friction tube commonly used to help guide filament from your filament roll onto your extruder head. That's basically all it is. It's very cheap on eBay, definitely worthwhile getting some. Build envelope. This is the maximum printing volume your machine is capable of, usually listed in X, Y, and Z coordinates. For example, the Flashforge Streamer is 230 by 150 by 140 millimeters. And I think that'll do it for this episode of 3D Printing 101. I haven't even touched on file or 3D print preparation jargon. That'll be coming in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing and giving me a like. It helps me out a lot. I look forward to seeing you again soon here on Maker's Views. See you later.